Hi, welcome back to Cheyenne, Wyoming Urban Gardener, and this is Debbie. And a couple of videos ago, maybe about 10 videos ago by now, we were talking about, is it sustainable to grow in containers? So I wanted to do an update, since it now has been a few more weeks, of the container situation and how they are going. So let's see how sustainable containers can be. Well, here we have our hibiscus. We've been pulling flowers off at least five to 10 flowers a day now. Um, we're saving these for hibiscus teas, hibiscus mix mixed with rose hips and all kinds of other herbs, and um, hibiscus sugar, and all kinds of things that are really delicious. So we've been saving all of these blooms, and the plants have really just taken off, have really bloomed out as far as the foliage, and we've had loads of blooms. I think there is, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight blooms on it right now. Nine, nine blooms on it right now. And then counting the smaller ones, which just bloomed again, 10, 11, 12. We've got um, about 10 more blooms that are about ready to happen. All these little buds right here are blooms that are coming out. Got some that are just about ready to open. So we're keeping all of those, we dry them, and then we make all those different things out of them. Our orange mint that we picked up earlier in the season is draping off of the pot. I've already taken um, quite a few little stems off of it, have rooted those, propagated those, started those, been handing them out to everybody. But we have loads and loads of mint in here. We have more lettuce that is getting ready to come on in these galvanized steel containers. We have parsley in that container over there that is nice and bushy and beautiful that we've been harvesting off of and drying and that's the same parsley seed that i've saved for seven years now um, we've got cucumbers planted these are burpee pickler at the base of the hibiscus trees those are coming on just about ready to bloom already and then they will start running like crazy and hopefully we'll have some cucumbers out of those before september hits because it doesn't take long once they start getting the runners on. We've got a whole galvanized steel container that I planted just a few weeks ago with lettuce. We had taken out all of the old radishes and things, planted lettuce in here, and look how beautiful that is. It's ready to harvest. It's loose leaf lettuce, a gourmet blend. So we have all kinds of lettuces in there. Our lemon mint, which is that one right there, nice and big and bushy we have not propagated any of it yet because the orange mint's a little bit more rare so we will we're going to go ahead and propagate some of those and hand those out to everybody out in the community we have loads of tomatoes on our sun sugar gold or sun gold cherry tomato whichever one you call it i've seen both actually um, and they're both the same tomato so we've got loads of tomatoes on there you can see them hanging they're not ripe yet but they will be ripe in the next couple of weeks at least we have yellow pear tomatoes, you can see those. Some are ripe, ready to eat. And then we have loads and loads and loads and loads and loads and loads more of yellow pear tomatoes on this vine. It is now about six feet tall, you can see that. I just tied it up some more today and the top of it was actually down to here this morning and it has grown this much in one day. I actually just got done fertilizing again with a 202020 water soluble organic fertilizer and we've got so much stuff these are the tomatillos that i just transplanted a few days ago and the huge tomato from suburban homesteader wyoming slash arizona that's sandy up in gillette wyoming and we transplanted that one and that one has just it's actually grown triple the size in just a few days We've got a couple of tomatoes we stuck in here. They're not doing so great because they were um, came up from seed in the area where I just showed you the lettuce. And I went ahead and transplanted them out here, but they are bigger than what they were when I transplanted them. So we'll see if they actually do anything. I'm suspecting they're either sun sugar gold, sun gold, or um, yellow pear. We got these two tomatoes here. They are absolutely loaded with tomatoes. There's one here. And then one over here the foliage isn't doing so great on this tomato plant but it is still producing like crazy and this is a uh, i suspect two of the san marzanos i thought they were sun sun gold or sun sugar gold tomatoes but um i do believe 
now that it, those those were the two little tiny tomatoes that I found in the San Marzano's and I transplanted into some containers, let them grow out a little bit, and then I planted them over here. So it turns out we're going to have San Marzano's on these. Um, one of the tomato plants doing fantastic. As you can see, no browning of the leaves or anything. This one, I would suspect, has some of that blight um, that carried over from the San Marzano's that were in the main garden. And then we've got two propagated rooted um, suckers tomatoes over here. One is a yellow pear tomato, I believe, and the other one is a sun gold tomato. And I think we've got one more that actually might be a super sauce tomato. It's not doing the best in the world, but it is putting on some new growth and blooming. So we might just go ahead and take these bottom limbs off and let it go ahead and come on because the top growth is really healthy. We have watermelons hanging everywhere, these watermelons are not super huge as yet but they grow by leaps and bounds daily and just a couple of days ago they were ping pong ball size and now they are almost softball size so you can see that there there's two of them there and we've got yeah the um, doll baby watermelons all throughout here i cannot really show you the ones that are set because the vines are just crazy and we've got a miller's farmstead wa uh, watermelon right there um, there's actually a couple in there, but that's the one that you can see. Um, it's too far um, vining for an order for us to get back there and show you close up. But um, we have basil like crazy in here. We've got strawberries like crazy in here. And look at those watermelon vines. And this is just a few days growth. I just showed you these a few days ago. And look at that. They are crazy with growth. We've probably got 20 feet wide of vines here and uh, loads of watermelons set on there. We've got cucumbers hanging from the white spine cucumbers and the Crenshaws and the cantaloupes in this one, the Charente cantaloupe. We've got cantaloupes set on these. Um, the vines I've tied up a little bit because they were just, if you remember, spread out all over the crate, all over the place. Kind of getting hard for us to come in here and park without hitting a vine. So I went ahead and tied some of these up. And we have cucumbers in here like crazy. There's another one. And there's a bunch of little ones coming on. There's one there and one there more and more cucumbers all throughout here so the white spine cucumbers have definitely are doing their duty now we've got cucumbers coming up on the space master cucumbers back here um, you can see a little one poking out right there and it got pollinated today because it's already getting bigger and we have cucumbers over here let me show you one of these these are the the spy, the um, burpless cucumbers, and we've got cucumbers in there. You can see that nice one right there. And we've got a couple more in there. They're a little bit smaller. Here's one. And we got cucumbers here, here, and here. On all of these that have set, we've got peppers hanging in gobs on this pepper right here. And there's just two big gym peppers in there, and they are producing like crazy. We got more yellow pear tomatoes here. And again, this plant, almost the same height as the other one, about six feet tall. Um, I just don't have another stake that is as long as that. Um, well, actually I do. I can probably get in here and try to stake that one up a little bit better because I just used a natural pole in this one. If I run out of stakes, I use wood, natural wood. Um, we've got another watermelon in here. You can see that one getting pretty big. And there's one actually right behind it as well. Here's another one. See that right there? We've got cucumbers on this one that are producing. We've got a cucumber there. We've got a bigger one here. And we've got these cu cucumbers are ready to start blooming and um, they're starting to run like crazy. I don't have any more trellises for them. So I may have to get in here with some sticks and try to strap something together. Um, we've got watermelons setting on this one. We've got cantaloupes setting on this one. We've got watermelon here. And three watermelons now 
back here and you can see them they're just stacking on top of each other two watermelons on this one that didn't have any just a few days ago and our butter dish squash is almost as big as the container now and you can see a bloom in there so it'll start producing pretty soon and then out here which is not really a container but kind of is because it is just surrounded by concrete we have morning glories that are about to bloom we got lettuce like crazy we have more lettuce that's planted right here radishes here yellow chamomile there our all of this stuff in here we got beans and chamomile and um, lemon balm and lavender and rosemary and flowers all kinds of things and more cucumbers more cucumbers that are setting on all of these vines now and I would say that that is a success as far as container gardening goes and whether it's sustainable or not because remember I got all of these pots either from Dollar Tree given to me goodwill or dropped off that were free um, containers and I've grown and I share with everyone that I can for all of the generosity that they have in bringing containers to me and we just keep producing food in such a small area even though this is a huge house so you can see that we are definitely successful in our container gardening and then of course we have the main gardens as well and we have blooms on our zinnias like crazy we've got beans like crazy in here they're climbing to the top of the corn now and we have our tahitian squash our pumpkins all kinds of things that are in here and our corn that was shaded in the back is beginning to put on tassels now too and has pretty much caught up to the size of the other corn once they get once they get their tassels they shoot up another two feet or so and they'll be right up there with these guys so that's all of those guys so we've got multiple corn ears on each stalk some only have one especially the shorter ones but for the most part we have two and three on every stalk you can see that there and there's like two on this one one right there and well that one only has one but this one has two this one has two pretty much all of them have two each some have one so we'll have lots of corn potatoes like crazy in here hopefully they have produced more than the Yukon gold did but Yukon gold were successful we did have more than what we planted which is always a goal but we always want more to make sure that we have enough in storage and we've got our Kellogg's breakfast tomatoes that we're not doing a whole lot before blooming and setting their tomatoes now and they are getting really huge too um, there I know that I knew that they would be huge plants but they were doing so poorly in the beginning well not really poorly just kind of stagnant in growth I didn't think that they were gonna get super huge but they are I've tied them up already again this morning and we have peppers on my grandson's plant lemon basil like crazy we've got a broccoli in there that's gonna produce we have got tomatoes on the vine over here that are ripe and a lot that are still hanging that are not ripe and that's basically a container garden right there in itself we've got more radishes that are coming up in this that I just planted actually my daughter planted we got some radishes in behind we got a borage in the middle and then we have the main garden with all those tomatillos tomatoes peppers red curry squash all of the beans I've picked about a gallon of beans off of just the half runners that I have alone and there was only 25 plants in here at the very back of this green trellis that is where we had those half runner beans and they've produced about a gallon just themselves and now the rattlesnake pole beans have caught up as well you can see they're climbing all the way to the top of the trellis so finally yay I think we're gonna have the trellis completely filled up with beans as well as all of these out here have produced like crazy we've got beans hanging in there just about ready to pick I've already picked three or four times off of these and we've got our tomatoes setting back here now finally 
even though we've got that one plant that looks really bad and a couple of more that definitely have blight they're still producing and they look healthy as far as the tomatoes that are coming on so I'm hoping that they will definitely get through the season we've got our sunflower blooming over there let me see if I can get a good picture of that because that bloom is actually really pretty not very tall but it is a very pretty very very pretty bloom right there the head is uh, the head of it's actually pretty good sized and I expect it'll just get bigger um, I've noticed when they bloom the heads get a little bit bigger we've actually got an eggplant that's set and we've got a couple of more that are setting right now so we've got an eggplant in there that you can see um, this tomatillo is just about ready to start producing as well and the other one that came up on their own again another look at the potatoes and we actually hit the Goodwill the other day and picked up another batch of tomato cages. These are the stronger, bigger ones than I had originally. So we picked up quite a few of those, got them on a really good deal. I basically paid $15 for uh, at least 20 tomato cages that are nice and big. And also got eight large square foot pots, which one of them, or actually four of them, look like they're two foot square pots so anyway we've got those there so $15 it wasn't bad for all of them less than a dollar a piece on some so we've got all of that and our onions are getting a lot bigger now I just hit them again with the 202020 today so they should really pick up in size over the next few days but they have already done that as well so we're gonna have some nice sized onions in here. Some of them are actually a little bit bigger than medium size now, especially that one right there. So all of them are bulbing up very nicely. And peas are still producing like crazy. I've got to pick peas tomorrow. We've got calendula blooming like crazy through here. And our zinnias over here have started blooming. So we've got those. And we've got red curry squash that are setting on the vines. This one has sent the vine everywhere at this point. That one is climbing the peas. So I think the peas are probably going to be doomed pretty soon. And we've got yellow straight neck squash in there. I lost another yellow straight neck squash for the same thing. Too heavy. Basically, we had a wind a storm come through and it just snapped off. But again, we have the two smaller ones that are already picking up in growth. This one started blooming almost immediately and it started spreading out. It won't be the prettiest plant, but it'll produce squash. So that's the great thing. So we've got our red curry setting like crazy with um, squash. And you can see that, um, yeah, it's, it's really, <laughs> I just keep wrapping it around the fence here in the front because it just keeps going and going and going and it had started climbing the house in the back but it actually fell over from the weights so now it's going along the back of the house or actually the front of the house the really is what it is so it's going along the wall um, it's almost made it out to the end of this first section of wall right there we have zucchini setting like crazy in here that was a dragonfly you just saw breeze through we've had dragonflies every day that are catching all of these pests so that's a great thing we have been eating off of our celery like crazy the stalks are full size now I could harvest the heads if I wanted to but I'm going to leave them for the full season and harvest them right right at the last um, we've got cauliflower that is just getting ginormous and you can see our sunflowers are really starting to get big now these are the mammoth so they are starting to get a lot taller and bigger but they already have blooms on them so I suspect they'll start blooming at about six feet tall they're just about there um, so we're not gonna have those super huge over 10 feet tall blooms this year our broccoli is so close to producing it's not even funny um, and they just keep getting bigger and bigger this one right here is it has to be at least four feet tall now it's just enormous plant so you can see it's almost as tall as the sunflowers um, taking out our Yukon gold potatoes and planting all through here with carrots and parsnips and radishes and things like that actually helped out our red cabbage. They kind of spread out a little bit instead of standing straight up and they have started curling up their leaves to produce heads. 
we have a very nice head of cabbage over there right now and the other heads are coming on and then we have some very nice heads in the back I just want them to get a whole lot bigger hopefully they won't split we've been keeping an eye on that if I start to see any cracking whatsoever I will harvest them very quickly um, and we've just got an amazing amount of growth in such a very short amount of time that I was so worried about this garden and it really has started pick, picking up in just the last few days. Um, we've got our carrots here are getting really huge now that they don't have the potatoes in the way. Yeah, they're getting more light. So are the daikon radishes that are in the back. We planted some more daikon radishes here in the front and they have really started getting a lot bigger and I have to thin those out because there is three and four in each little um, hole there. Our lettuce back here is looking amazing. It's finally really picked up. Our lettuce over in near the cabbage has started picking up in growth again. It nearly got all picked up by the birds, but it has really started producing. These guys have done their job. We've got another sunflower that bloomed over here and it's actually got multiple heads on it and looking just fantastic. We had more carrots that have came up now in this row over here that has struggled the whole summer. Um, so we've got some more rainbow carrots planted in there and some other things and those are all starting to come up. And our beets are looking amazing, so are our turnips. And you can really see the dinosaur kale now is starting to look like kale is supposed to. So I've been fertilizing that just to get it on a lot quicker. And we have squash setting in here on the vines like crazy you can see it is just a tangled mess in there um, and i have a boston marrow i believe just found it today um, barely saw it and there it is so i'm hoping and it is already really big in there so i'm hoping to get a really nice size one off of that and we have got some acorn squash that have set as well you can see that there and we have pumpkins that are setting in there it is a crazy mess of squash in here but it's all looking beautiful they're healthy nice big leaves our rhubarb is just gone crazy with growth um, the stalks are amazing size now and so is our swiss chard our swiss chard has really started picking up and growing like crazy in the last few days so is our russian kale it's in here and all of our radishes came up um, we had a squirrel come over and drop an apple over there but all of our radishes have came up and hopefully we'll get some radishes out of this and our acorn squash over here is getting a lot bigger they have they're in the shade so they're gonna take a lot longer but I'm hoping to see something out of them they're getting pretty good size now and it's getting too dark out here to see much else but everything on the north side is doing well and the big mex pumpkin doing great as, as well so anyway the container gardening it is working we produce quite a bit of food in containers i wouldn't say we produce everything but if we had enough containers we could so anyway like subscribe hit the notification bell for notices on new videos as they come out and take a look at those delicata squash they're blooming and they are starting for to produce as well gotten a runner on them so looking forward to that anyway like subscribe hit the notification bell for notices on new videos as they come out and we hope to see you again and by the way we hit 260 subscribers yay and i hope to see many more i don't do a whole lot of contests which i haven't done really a contest on this group yet but once i get more subscribers i will definitely start thinking about that and will be something that I would look forward to if I'm going to do any type of giveaways or anything like that. I would like to for it to stick to gardening because that's what this channel is about. And the struggles of gardening in Cheyenne, Wyoming, zone 5A, 5B. And uh, well, anyway, I look forward to seeing everybody in the next video and hopefully we'll get to do a live soon. I have been so, so busy with gardening and everything. It has been crazy. But anyway, we shall see you in the next one.